Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, it's always a pleasure to, to come to Italy and to visit this, this beautiful city. Um, and more than else, it's also very, it's a great pleasure to talk with you about one of my great passions, which is creating brands and, and, uh, and great advertising. Um, I spent most of my career, uh, about 20 years, uh, building brands, most of that time on the client side, as uh, we would refer to it, and the last few years uh, in, in media. And what I'd like to talk with you a little bit about today is, is how the, one of the oldest advertising media is now becoming uh, one, of the, one of the newest. Um, and more specifically, uh, I'm not sure if this happens to many of you, but I spend a lot of time going to presentations about the digital revolution. Um, and how things are changing very quickly, and I've got to admit that I leave some of those meetings uh, with my head spinning, spinning and just a little bit uh, uh, stressed out. Um, sometimes I feel just a little bit as if I just walked into uh, George Orwell's dystopian 1984, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, and uh, what our CEO, William Eccleshare, would say about that is also related to 1984. Um, specifically, he would say that uh, anyone who was born 1984 or earlier just doesn't get it from a digital perspective. Um, and looking around the room today, I can see that there are some of you who were born perhaps before 1984, but then some of you also uh, who were um, uh, born after 1984. And uh, there will be a little bit of something for everybody in this presentation today as I talk about um, what is great outdoor advertising um, and, and specifically much more what has always been uh, great advertising. I'm going to do it by walking you through uh, five examples, uh, showing you five examples. They're quite uh, recent uh, for me that characterize what's what's really great about outdoor advertising uh, and what's making this media uh, one of the uh, the newest ones and the most actual ones. Specifically, um, I guess this whole idea of of social networks and uh, engagement through user generated content. Uh, some would say that that's actually the latest and, and the newest. Uh, I would actually argue that 20,000 years ago uh, in northern Spain, where you would find these uh, cave paintings, uh, people were trying to tell about something amazing that they'd done in their life and, and share it with everybody else. So we could say that this was Twitter uh, 20,000 years ago. Um, it's also a great example that uh, people have been trying to show something and communicate something uh, for, for the longest period of time, which really makes outdoor and images up on a physical wall uh, one of the, uh, the oldest medium around. Um, with that, um, what I'd like to do is uh, just uh, launch into uh, what I believe is my first, uh, my first video, which is going to illustrate for you uh, one of the first messages that I'd like to talk about. So how many of you had seen that, that video before? Okay, good. Well, for some of you, it was, uh, was quite new. And I guess that the, uh, the message that I wanted to convey with, with that specific video is that uh, when it comes to talking about what's new and out of home, um, it's, uh, there's many things that don't have to do with exactly this. Many times we get all caught up in talking about uh, the technology, and it's not about the technology. It's not about the kit. Um, amazing outdoor advertising 
uh, uh, involves one of the greatest elements of any advertising uh, since it's been around, and, and that happens to be uh, emotion. Um, and Daniel Goleman discovered that in the business world, there's this type of intelligence referred to as emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence usually leads us to take some of the best business decisions that we can make. Uh, likewise, in, in advertising, if it's not emotional, uh, then it's, it's, it's truly not, not effective. And so building fantastic advertising like what we've seen here uh, with the situation with, with Ben Ali. Ben Ali was the Tun Tunisian president from 1987 until 2011. After that time period, uh, he, was, he, was, uh, he left office and he was prosecuted by the, uh, the Tunisian authorities, uh, convicted of, of bribery, fraud, theft, and condemned to uh, a life sentence. He's currently exiled in Saudi Arabia. So if, as you can imagine, this campaign, which played on that, that he's coming back, really did trigger emotion in the hearts of the Tunisian population. Very effective example of, of touching the hearts of people to create effective outdoor advertising. So it's all about emotion. And um, one of the other ways that we can really truly set off emotion, obviously, is through, through color, beautiful color. Last night when I got into Milan, I had time to go out uh, for a walk. And I've got to admit that it was a bit intimidating to think that I'm going to be up here on stage talking with, with all of you about what is uh, creativity, innovation, and great, uh, great advertising. Uh, a bit intimidating because I walked down Dante Street. Um, I, walked out in I walked in front of a, um, a beautiful establishment where simply the ice cream looked something like that. And I've never noticed that before when I come to, to Italy, that the way that the ice cream is prepared in the window is, is beautiful. Uh, very detailed preparation and beautiful use of, of color. And I actually uh, I think I tweeted about it last night. So color, shape, patterns. Um, is really what can affect emotion. Uh, effective, simple ideas like the one that we saw uh, really does get people to take action, which at the end of the day, as an advertiser or as a media owner or as a creative agency or a media agency, what we really want to do is we want to get people to do things. And if you think about a great blank piece of paper, um, most of what representing what, what makes us make decisions, um, the rational component of it is similar to that little white box up in the corner. But the emotional component of what really drives our decisions is related to the big black space on, on the piece of paper there. And I think that's going to bring me to my next video, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, one more image that I wanted to share before that. Um, keeping in mind this idea of triggering people's emotions, uh, one of the best ways to do that uh, is related to out of home. Um, when people are out on the street, it's been demonstrated by investigative research that 70% of the time, people are, are open to making a decision at a nearby point of sale. And that split second of exposure to a familiar image like the one from Coke or from McDonald's or from Apple on the left-hand side is all that somebody needs to, um, to actually change their mind and create a positive perception about a product. And with that, I'm going to take you to the next uh, video and my second message that I'd like to leave you with today. Coke is a brand where we are always trying to provoke more happiness in the world and do that in ways that are tangible and authentic. The idea of doing that for two groups of people who have been divided for five decades presents to us a challenge and an opportunity that's almost too big to not try to make happen. If great stories were easy to tell, everyone would be telling them. What's been the hardest part of, of this project? Every element of it, from the technology and, and taking technology that didn't actually exist and having to, to go find somebody who could build that technology. We had to come up with a way to have two people in different countries come together and interact in as real a way as possible. Arguably the most important part of making this experience real was not only being able to see the person in front of you and feeling like you're in the same room, but actually being able to touch them, interact with them, trace a heart, trace a peace sign, do something together simultaneously. I think that's one of the elements that really made this magical. This is a prototype. This is something that's never been done before. If you look through Skype or through the iPhone, iChat, it's always top down. It's like an ATM camera view. We didn't want that. So we moved the camera inside of the machine, shot at eye level through a screen that was holding a projected image. And your perspective would be just as if you were standing in front of that person. One of the main challenges was how do we see through a wall? How do we film someone through their own image? 
Everyone said, oh, that's impossible. But we knew there was a way, and the way we thought to do that was 3D. We basically have an HD webcam and a pair of modified active shutter 3D glasses that go over the webcam. So it allows you to shoot straight through the screen as if it wasn't there. And we needed a screen that was transparent enough to see through, but opaque enough to hold the image. All of our initial tests, the different screens that we were using, worked. They produced an image, but it was either clear, so it revealed the components inside, or um, the image was not bright enough. So this screen, it was a major breakthrough for us because it really made you feel like you were interacting with someone else. When you're doing an experience like this, where people have to connect, you need a certain amount of bandwidth. Now, going to India or Pakistan, that's not only not guaranteed, it's almost impossible to obtain. So we had to compress the video in a way that it wouldn't affect the user experience. One of the challenges was to make an interface that didn't intimidate people and make an experience that was inviting, making sure that the person in front of the machine knows what to do when they get up to it and that it's just a natural, seamless experience. Not only do we have to overcome barriers on the technology side, we had to overcome barriers on the location side. So cell phones not working, rolling blackouts happening. And big protests that are happening. And then between the two countries, there's been violations of a ceasefire. Adds another sort of interesting level to how careful we have to be in our preparation for this. I think the future of where this technology could go is really exciting. Bringing people together through happiness is probably one of the most positive messages that you can put out there. And again, the technology was just the vehicle that made that magical experience happen. It's very uh, difficult uh, anytime you're going to talk about great advertising and, and uh, great marketing to not talk about Coca-Cola. Um, and um, I think that this example is a fantastic example of some, what someone like myself, I actually believe after spending uh, uh, nearly two decades now working for great brands, that truly great brands can actually change the world. They can have an impact on, on society. Um, and I, I worked for about uh, 12 years of my career at a company called Kellogg's, which maybe some of you know, and uh, truly believe that uh, we're doing something good for society, what we do. And this example, uh, bringing together two countries, which after they were separated in 1947, um, they uh, have been at basically at war since then. Um, fantastic example, um, and uh, uh, my friend uh, here, David Ogilvie, uh, said something which I believe uh, really drives home the next message, which is that, uh, great advertising is and always has been about being honest. Uh, much of the time at advertisers, we almost panic when we think that social media uh, will be taking over the control of our, of our brands. Um, but the fact is, is that great brands have always been honest and great brands have always been able to transmit authentic values, like in this example with, with Coca-Cola here. So uh, second message is, is just that. I guess the other thing that I would say here is this... Um, this Coca-Cola example is a stunt. So we had uh, uh, two locations, uh, two different camera crews, um, and it was really a, a stunt. But this sort of thing can be done at a massive scale um, with, uh, with digital outdoor uh, billboards. And this is an example uh, from Spain. Uh, and um, uh, another great rivalry is Real Madrid versus uh, Barça. Um, and prior to one of those matches, um, basically uh, Betfair, what they did was they allowed people in Barcelona to send messages to a hashtag um, that would then be posted on digital screens in Madrid. So the Barcelona fans could send their messages to Madrid, obviously filtering out obscenities. Um, and the Madrid fans could send uh, their messages via hashtag to the big digital screens around Barcelona. Great example of engaging uh, with two different populations around a brand like uh, Betfair. So, uh, Today, outdoor advertising is clearly real-time, social, and it, it definitely can be taken to broadcast reach, uh, and, and I actually believe that it can have a real impact on society. Next one for you, the next video I'd like to show.
that's an example from uh, just a few weeks ago. So hopefully that actually is quite quite new to most of you. Um, do you all know who Gary Lineker, Lineker was, is? Gary is a, a famous uh, British uh, footballer. This appeared on, uh, our, on bus shelters in, uh, in, in London uh, several weeks ago. Uh, he's currently a, a news broadcaster, a sport broadcaster. Um, and I think this also brings me then to one of the things that has never changed, also from another great, uh, great uh, friend of the advertising world, Leo Burnett. Um, increasingly, it's difficult to really get through to people with the fragmentation of media. Um, people are unwilling to stop and be interrupted in what they're doing. But if you can really provide them with something and provide them with something that helps them in their day-to-day -day life, then they will clearly respond to it. And this is a great example of, of just that. It's also an example of how we can use social media to interact. So you'd, you'd send Gary uh, a message and you, know, you want to take a picture of him and he does this, or, or you want to try the new flavor and it'll, it'll send it out through the vending element on this digital screen. Um, but a, a great example of really giving people something that they, that they need. Another example of that, also on a, on a London bus shelter, uh, for the launch of, of Revenge Wears Prada. In this example, again, it was just using a, a regular traditional paper screen. Uh, and what we allowed people to do using uh, uh, mobile phone technology, uh, NFC codes and QR codes, uh, we allowed people to download the first chapter of the book. Uh, and then if they liked that book, we would redirect them either to uh, um, uh, a page where they could buy the book or uh, uh, to a store that was nearby the, uh, the bus shelter so that they could actually uh, purchase it. So I guess that, that takes me to, you know, again, um, great advertising really does need to give something to the consumers. There's some other examples out there in outdoor, like the use of smart bikes. So some of the smart bike systems around the world, Citibank uh, sponsored it in, in uh, New York, uh, Vodafone sponsors it in, in, in Barcelona. Um, big uh, Barclays in, in the UK, again, those are great examples how advertisers really do want to do something meaningful and useful for their consumers as well within the world of, of outdoor. I think this will take me to my next video, which speaks for itself. Since 1958, the relief organization Miserior has been creating self-help initiatives for the third world. In the fight against poverty and injustice, every euro counts, and it's clear that even small donations can make a big difference, though very few people know this. The simple solution, the one thing that people always have with them, a credit card. Last year, over 40% of all payments in Europe were made with one. So Miserior developed the Social Swipe, the first poster that accepts credit cards. When a card is swiped, the resulting donation can provide daily bread for a family in Peru, or help an imprisoned Filipino child return to a normal life, all for just two euros. Although it sounds simple, synchronizing the digital poster with a complex card verification system was a challenge. When the card was swiped, a secure process quickly authenticated it and activated a film sequence on screen. This all appeared streamlined thanks to specially developed software. And the posters had a lasting impact. When donors received their credit card statement, they were asked to turn their single donation into a monthly one. It's a small gesture that makes a big difference. The social swipe, making giving easier than ever before. So I think that example, I was sitting in, I was sitting in, uh, in Cannes this year when they put that one up on the screen in, in the audience, and you could actually hear people kind of go, ooh, when it was said. It was really, really amazing. And I think it's amazing because it's just so beautifully simple in terms of the idea and the execution. But at the same time, behind the scenes, the execution is enormously complex, complex as you can see. But the simplicity of the idea, I think, is, is the main point uh, there as well. Um, I guess the other uh, important thing to mention is, I, I was, is, is the importance of, of digital out of home as a, as a transactional me media or even out of home in general to combine with, with, with mobile. Um, and I had a meeting the other day, uh, I guess it was a, a, about a year ago, with the, the president of, of Google. And he was telling me that you know, the, the unique strength of, of much of uh, digital and, and internet comes from the fact that you can really get supply to meet up with demand. And I think that this is a fantastic example of how using uh, mobile technology, we can actually do that with, with out of home as well. 
and create a real transactional media. This is an example of a, of a bookstore um, in Copenhagen, I believe it is, uh, and it shows how people, while they have free time, I think we've probably all seen the Korean, Korean subway example for, for Tesco. There's another example, and there are many, many of these kinds of examples where when people are not busy and they're waiting for the subway, they can actually use that time to buy a book or, or buy some music using uh, outdoor as a transactional media. And I think this will bring me then to my uh, last, last video and my fifth video. So with this one specifically, um, one of the things I, I spent a lot of time meeting with uh, creative agencies and creative partners, um, and one of the things that they, they tell me is often they work on a brief with the advertiser, um, they, it fits the budget, um, everybody is happy with it, but then the real difficulty then is to get the, uh, the solution executed. Um, and I think by interacting with, uh, with media owners, um, I think it's a unique opportunity to really uh, make things happen. And the example that I just showed you there uh, from the subway uh, in, uh, in Stockholm um, is a perfect example of how we can actually take very um, uh, complicated uh, supersonic technology and create something which is really beautifully engaging in a very simple way. But at the end of the day, uh, media owners can really, and specifically outdoor media owners, we can really help bring creative ideas to life by working uh, directly with us. And I, I had to uh, use our, our President uh, uh, Obama who, who brought this, this idea to life of yes we can. And so if you think about outdoor, I think that I would encourage you to think of, of one thing which is yes we can. Yes we can actually bring great creative ideas uh, to life. Here's another example of, of just that. Um, I'm sure you've, you've seen uh, this one as well. It's a fantastic example uh, done by British Airways in, in the UK. And basically the way it worked is when a BA flight would fly over a certain area of, of London or Heathrow, it would trigger a series of very sophisticated technological reactions and the child would then, the child standing there would stand up and he would, he would point at the flight flying overhead and he would identify that it's flight BA 272 from San Diego. Truly amazing technology again, but creating a very simple engaging uh, campaign. And I think it demonstrates that in addition to uh, everything else that I've mentioned that's consistent with great advertising, uh, again, out of home is, is one of the most modern technologies today, one of the most modern media. It's part of the Internet of Things, and we are essentially another appliance on the Internet. We can really bring our, our supports to life using dig digital mobile technology and other very sophisticated solutions. So with that, hopefully I've convinced you today that out of home is... Uh, uh, one of the oldest medium, but at the same time, uh, characterizing everything that's great about great outdoor advertising, uh, emotion, simplicity, great execution. At the same time, it's also becoming one of the newest media and also one of the most creative. Thank you very much. <laughs>